which of the following systems is causal? And in questioning, in questions relating to uh, causality, we're always interested in the bit between the brackets there. We want to know whether or not the output is anticipating a future value of the input. So we're interested in knowing the time when the input value is needed. What we're not interested in is everything else. So we're not interested in the value or the power of the 1 over pi there. We're not interested in this power here. We're interested only in the bit between the brackets, the argument for x. So we want to know what instant of time the input is needed in order to calculate this output. And the only question we need to ask is whether this value is less than or equal to that value for all values of t. So we can simply ask the question, we say, is t always less than or equal to t? The answer is yes, it's always equal, so therefore a is causal. For b, same question. Is t over 2 always less than or equal to t? It looks as if it is, but actually, if there's any doubt, you try to solve the opposite problem. You say, is there a solution, or is there a value for t for which this isn't true, so t over 2 would be greater than t. Because if this were to happen, it would mean that we were anticipating the future. It would mean that this would be greater than that. We were looking into the future. So let's try to solve this. So um, we can bring t to the other side. So you'd have t over 2 minus t is greater than 0. So minus t over 2 greater than 0, so t less than 0. So this shows us that for all negative time, x of t over 2 would actually be a future value. So therefore, it's a non-causal system. Because we found a range of values for t for which this would not hold. So to answer the original question, is t over 2 always less than t? The answer is no. So it's non-causal. Let's make some space. Next. Well, t minus 2 is always less than t, that's obvious, but t plus 2 isn't. So we ask, is both t minus 2 less than or equal to t and t plus 2 less than or equal to t? And the answer is no, because one of these isn't true. It doesn't matter that one is. As long as one isn't, then it's a non-causal system. Okay, next question, D. Again, we're only interested in the bit between the brackets. T squared minus 2, is that always less than T? Well, let's check. Is T squared minus 2 always less than or equal to T? So let's try solving it. So T squared minus T minus 2, is it always less than or equal to zero. So for this parabola, because this is a, a quadratic, for this always to be negative, or less than or equal to zero, we would want the discriminant for this to be um, either negative or zero. So b squared minus 4ac would need to be less than 
or equal to zero. This is called the discriminant. So, here we have a equals one, b equals minus one, and c equals minus two. That's these coefficients, one, minus one, and minus two. So b squared minus 4ac would be 1 minus 4 times minus 2, which is 9. Now, is 9 less than or equal to 0? No. So therefore, t squared minus t minus 2 is not always less than or equal to zero. And because it's not always less than or equal to zero, that means this isn't always true. And therefore, we would conclude the system is non-causal. So we found that it is possible for t squared minus 2 to be greater than t. We could have done the opposite. We could have said, um, instead of saying uh, t squared less than or equal to t, we could have solved the opposite. We could have said, well, is there a value for t for which t squared minus 2 is greater than t? We'd ask ourselves, is there such a value of t? So it's say t squared minus t minus 2 greater than or equal to 0. So try solving this, and you will find a range of values. You'll find a range of values for t. And that is bad news. Because if there are values for t that make this true, then that means this can't be causal. So D is non-causal. Now let's look at E. Let's make some space. Let's look at E. Again, we're interested only in this bit, and this is clearly less than t, so is t minus 2 always less than or equal to t? The answer is yes, and therefore this is a causal system. So by going through these one by one and only looking at the bits that matter, we can determine if these systems are causal or not. We only ask ourselves one question whether the bit in brackets is always less than or equal to t. This is for continuous time signals. If they were discrete time signals, we would be asking the same question of n.